Guys, welcome to the Power Half Hour. We are back, and today I have a very special guest from Williams Lake. That's right. Oh my goodness, I got it correct. Uh, I don't know my geography well in Canada or in BC here, but welcome, Mr. Trevor Big, uh, icon agent, a big influencer out there. Thank you for your partnership at EXP Realty, and thank you for being here today. I appreciate you having me, man. This is awesome. This is uh, it's one of my favorite things to do is get, to get together and collaborate with other agents. Thank you. So you interviewed me last week and I returned the favor this week. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Absolutely, man. So Trevor Big, um, I've been in the business five years with eXp for the past three. Um, I've completed 257 sales. That's an average of 51.5 homes annually. So wow. been busy since we, we got off the ground. Um, and I've been able to do all this with it within a little northern town of BC. Um, we've got a population of like 14,000. I've got no prior sales experience, no family or friends in the business. Wow. I've got no upline that I rely on. I'm literally the only EXP agent within like an hour radius of Williams Lake. Um, oh. Yet I'm about to secure my third icon award. So I, it's, you know, I just want to share that and prove that uh, your surroundings don't dictate how successful you're going to be. Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, that speaks for itself. It really doesn't. Um, but let me ask you this. Like, you have no database out there. How are you able to do 50 deals a year for the past five years? Uh, community engagement, man. I, I got out there and I did probably everything in the Realtor Handbook. I went cold calling. I went uh, door knocking. I, I signed up for the Big Brothers Big Sisters. I'm on the board of directors. I'm on the um, board for the... Um, community involvement programs. I do a little bit of everything. I basically, I figured the best way to get in front of people would be to do that, to be literally get in front of people. Um, I signed up 2019. So that was right before the pandemic a few years. But uh, my, my main objective when I first got into the game was to just get in front of people, man, shake as many hands as I can. Um, I think the highlight of that would be collaboration. Um, if I'm going to put any, if I'm going to pinpoint any one thing on how I was able to get successful in a, such a short amount of time, it would be collaboration. I use the people around me. I use the people in my circle. Um, I reached out to family, friends. I joined community wow. involvement groups. Um, I've got three kids. So I'm at, you know, I'm at all their track and fields. I'm at all their soccer games. Um I, I'm at as many places as I can possibly be. Yeah. So really getting involved in community, yeah, basically doing whatever it takes. Okay. Well, exactly that. I mean, when you first get started, there's no do this, do that. Right. And especially yeah. I, I signed up under a smaller brokerage when I first got out of, out of the, uh, out of the course. So there was no real, I wasn't taken under anybody's wing per se, or like I didn't have that kind of mentorship that uh, some other brokerages offer. Um, like obviously XP has some pretty incredible programs, but uh, when I signed up, it was very much, you know, here's your license, give it your all. And uh, so that's exactly what I did is I gave it my all. I came from, uh, my background is diamond drilling. So oh. I spent a lot of time in Hyder, Alaska, um, diamond drilling. And that job is, is uh, it's hard to correlate anything with that job to real estate because it's literally me and one other guy in a shack on the side of the mountain drilling holes in rocks. Um, but that kind of work had me doing 30 day shifts. So I'd go to work for 30 days straight. It was a camp job. So I'd go to work for 30 days straight. It would be 12, 14 hour days every single day. Um, you'd get home, spend about a week at home and then be back at work for 30 days straight. Now the shifts, oh. yeah, the shifts were a little bit intense. And so that's what got me out of that kind of career and into real estate. Of course, like everybody says, they want to be their own boss and have flexibility and all this fun stuff. Um, so I got out of diamond drilling, got into real estate and what I was able to pull out of diamond drilling was the work ethic, man. Um, mm -hmm. I found not to, not to put shade on anybody, but I feel like there's a lot of lazy realtors out there right now. A lot of mm -hmm. realtors who have got comfortable in their business. And so when I showed up willing to work 12, 14 hour days for 30 days straight with no breaks, um, I, I was able to outwork outpace basically everybody mm -hmm. in the market. You had no options. I mean, you were just out there drilling with one other guy for 30 days straight, 12 to 14 hour days, and you're yeah. enduring that. How was the weather? Weather sucked, man. <laughs> yeah. The weather sucked. Um, we're talking Hyder, Alaska, so we're right on the coastline there. Um, the winds blow, the, the, the weather's chilly. It's, uh, it's hard, and there was a lot of times where it was night shift, so I was working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., oh. and and you do that for 30 days straight and you come home a, a, a zombie pretty much, right? And so the, the four or five, six days that you get to spend at home are pretty much just rest and recovery until you get sent back for another month. So how did you happen to pick that profession? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was working at the lumber mill before that. And then the 2017 forest fires came through Williams Lake. 
And the lumber mill on the authority list there, I was pretty much next on the chopping block of who's going to get laid off. And I'm not the kind of guy who likes to get laid off or be out of work in any way, shape or form. So I heard of a bunch of guys heading up to Hyder, Alaska um, to go do diamond drilling. And, you know, as a 21, 22 year old kid, that sounded like a pretty cool job. And so I took that and did that until 2019 is when I got licensed. Wow. So how did you fall into then from diamond drilling to real estate? Uh, good question. I had a buddy. Um, everybody's got a buddy, right? Um, I had a buddy who was just getting his license. Um, he's He lives in, in, it's about three hours away from where I'm at. He's in Kamloops. I'm in uh, Williams Lake. So it's about a three hour drive from each other, but he was just getting his license. He had just started under another brokerage and was kind of preaching the, uh, the real estate way. He made it sound pretty cool. And so uh, I went ahead, did the course, got my license and uh, hit the ground running. Wow. Just through a, a small introduction, you're like, okay, well, let's go. Let's do it. it. It sounded a lot better than diamond drilling. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it, funny enough though. I mean, I got out of diamond drilling to the idea was to have the flexibility. I felt like I was spending so much of my life away in camp that I needed to spend more time here. Um, and, and, you know, even working 30 days straight, 12, 14 hour days, I'm, I'm putting in more hours into real estate than I was diamond drilling, but the mm -hmm. trade-off is I'm home every night. That's amazing. So uh, you have three kids, three girls. How old are the girls? Ooh, we got seven, just turned 11 and 13 going on 14. My goodness. So the girls, I guess, um, when you were diamond drilling, didn't see you for a whole month. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, a month was the shortest amount of time. Sometimes, Ooh, you know, if it was near wow. the end of the year, you could be five, six weeks, seven weeks. The longest stint I ever did was eight weeks. So that's, it's longer than you ever want to be away from anybody. And your, your wife took care of all three of them. Yeah. She's a trooper. She oh, is an absolute trooper. Oh. Um, that's probably the biggest life hack people don't talk about is a spouse that believes in you. If you've got another partner, if you've got somebody in your back corner that can hold you down, that is like, you can go 10 times further with somebody in your side than, than you can by yourself. And, and I appreciate the work that she put in. I tried to get her into real estate, not going to lie. She was my unlicensed assistant for the first probably two years. Um, but she's, she could basically said, there's no way we can both be realtors. She's seen the amount of hours I was putting in. She's seen me answering calls at all times of days and nights. She's seen me on weekends and evenings. And she just said that wasn't the life for her. So she's actually started her own catering business. Turned out really well. She's, she's super profitable. She's happy where she's at. I myself have hired two other assistants in the meantime. Um, oh. and, and they're both working out fantastic. That would be another big, huge hack is to hire an assistant as fast as possible. As realtors, we're expected to wear way too many hats. And if you ever expect to scale your business, you can't be wearing all those hats at the same time. And so you've got to be able to delegate some of those tasks. Absolutely. I, I think I scale way too slow and therefore I was burnt out for so many years. And it also led to our uh, marriage and relationship deteriorating because I didn't scale fast enough, but my business was growing like a rocket ship there. Um, talk a little bit about uh, the relationship side of things. Like when you're away that long um, and she was just a rock, like holding everything down, how did that go with you guys? Like in terms of marriage and the whole relationship and being actually still married, like eight weeks at a time, you're gone. Like, how does that work? Yeah. It puts a lot of stress on the relationship, man. You've got to have, and, and I mean, this goes hand in hand with being away, being present. Um, you got to have a high level of communication and, and it's got to be authentic communication. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be available to talk and have those hard talks. Um, I think, well, okay, let's break it down. I think personal and business wise, very fall hand in hand where you've got to be able to have those hard conversations and you've got to be yeah. able to set expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's why a lot of people lose relationships. I think that's yeah. why a lot of people lose business. I think that's why a lot of people lose in general is because one, they're afraid to have those hard conversations and two, they haven't set the expectations. If, if you just have... What did I hear a quote the other day? The the success for lo you're looking for is on the other side of that hard conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's Absolutely. that's how me and the wife are able to maintain such a strong relationship is authentic and high level of communication. Authentic and high level communication. Did you have to take a course for that, or like are yeah. you like that? No, that uh, that was something that was kind of instilled upon me as a kid. I mm -hmm. grew up in a household that lacked all of that. And so okay. I seen, yeah, I seen my mother go through uh, a couple divorces. I seen uh, my, my father himself left when I was two years old. And so 
there was a, I've seen a lot of trials and tribulations. And, and yeah. when I boiled it all down as to what, what the root cause of all of these issues were, I, I, I determined that it was a lack of communication or, or a fear of having those hard conversations. And so that's, that's my number one for pretty much anything for business, for personal, for everything. I am totally into having those hard conversations because once you have those hard conversations, they're not hard anymore. It just, mm -hmm. it's just part of the game. Right. And setting expectations is, is another big one. I mean, if both people know what to expect, then there's no way either of us can be off put by the scenario that we're handed. Yeah. Wow. So a lot of people, you know, they either turn out exactly like their parents yep, or they're going to turn out exact opposite and you chose the latter. And that's why you have these great conversations and be, be willing to have those difficult conversations because you've seen it. What's on the other side of no communication is turmoil is Ooh. let down totally. setback. Totally, man. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's not easy. And I mean, I think that that breaks down to like success is not easy. Right. But I mean, I've been through it all and the struggles of poverty is a lot harder than the struggles of success. I mean, the struggles of success are a lot more bearable. And so yeah. if you can, you know, pick your heart, everybody's heart is different, but pick your heart. Just choose your heart at the end of the day. I love that. I really love that. It's an amazing story, by the way. Can we back up a little bit? Because, you know, you uh, diamond drill. And then before that was, um, what, what, what was the the one before that? Lump, I was, at, yeah, I was at the lumber, lumber mill right lumber. out of high school. For, out of high school? Yeah. Trevor, how old are you? Uh, 29. 29 years old. My goodness. A major yeah. success at 29 years old. And so out of high school, lumber mill, and then straight into diamond drilling. And you got married at what age? Well, um, I'm I'm a fast. I've been married twice, John. <laughs> so <laughs> I got I got married. Uh, I got married once at 21 and then again, January of this year. Oh my goodness. Okay. So two marriages before 20. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I stay busy. You stay. <laughs> Were you born and raised in uh, Williams Lake? I was not. I was actually born and raised in Coquitlam. Coquitlam? Yeah. Yeah. Who yeah. In the right wait, 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 Trevor. Who in the right yeah. mind? Go from Coquitlam to Williams and tell me more about that. Uh, it was 2010. And my grandparents had already retired and moved up to Horsefly. It's a little town. Um, they're, they're, you know, avid hunters and fishers and they're outdoorsmen. So they bought a nice 30 acre chunk um, with some farmland and, and retired out there. Um, the house next door came up for sale. And that was a point in time where my parents, um, I mean, we were able to sell our little tiny, you know, 1200 square foot shack down in Coquitlam. And, and they were able to buy a nice big house on five acres with pigs and horses and all this stuff for, for basically half the price. So um, it was the cost of living that, that drove them up here. I, I was in my first year of high school, so it was not by choice for Trevor. Um, it, was a, it was a culture shock for Trevor, I'd say. I went yeah, from, you know, yeah. hanging out at the bowling alley and texting my friends and, and, you know, doing the, I'd catch a sky train to Metro town, you know what I mean? And do what yeah. all the other teenage kids do to uh, now I'm taking an hour bus ride from school to, to out to horsefly you get there you're an hour out of cell service we have dial-up internet i'm feeding the pigs before i catch the bus and i'm dealing with the chickens after school it was like a, it was a culture shock man wow so you really had to get acclimated to that pretty quickly right with your grandparents sure. and then you went to high school there a whole new set of friends it so i mean you're no stranger to extreme change then yeah i mean honestly um like I think I mentioned before, we, we grew up pretty, uh, I wouldn't say unfortunate, but we, we were not financially well off. And so um, I actually, I went to a different school every single year for elementary school, oh, um, yeah. all the way up until I think grade six, I stayed at my middle school from grade six to eight. But then again, I started high school down in Coquitlam and then halfway moved up to Williams oh, Lake. So oh, I've been, I think I've gone to like eight or nine different schools now. Oh, um, so, so I'm not, I was no... I didn't have any fear of being the new kid. I've been the new kid almost every year up until then. And I've had no problem making friends and kind of putting my footprint on there. Um, so I wasn't necessarily nervous about being put into a new scenario. I've, I've done it a hundred times, right? Yeah. And I'm starting to understand why you are who you are, how you are who you are. And yep. being so successful at such a young age, uh, it relates to how you're able to adapt to change and really thrive in any situation and, and it seems like change and setback or you just kind of eat it for breakfast. Well, it, it's, it's exactly that. I mean, if you want to break down any 
everybody's level of success, I think you can correlate it to their level of adapt adaptability. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, even in any market or any industry, it's going to, it's not what worked five years ago. doesn't work the same today. Right. So you have yeah. to be continuously adapting. And I think that's one of my biggest strengths is, is mm -hmm. I could, I could wake up tomorrow and do everything different and be awesome at it. My goodness. I got to learn from you because, you know, yeah. if my wife changes my shampoo, I cry about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but man, um, I'm just so inspired and, um, you know, I, I'm learning a lot from this call here and, you know, it's no wonder how you're able to do so many deals uh, in such a little time in such a small town. It's completely unheard of, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You'd be doing 200 deals here uh, but if you're back in Coquitlam, I guarantee it just because the market is so much bigger. I know you can do it. It's crazy. Well, that, that's, that's the plan, John. Honestly, as soon as the, uh, as soon as the kids are out of school, we're heading down South, we're coming back. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, man. Well, we sure. We've already looked at some properties. Um, the wife is itching. So honestly, before me and her got together, she had never spent a lot of time down in Vancouver. And so when I took her down there, basically she's born and raised Williams Lake. Okay. And, and so she hadn't spent a lot of time getting out of Williams Lake. And so I was the one who brought her down to Vancouver and showed her all the spots that I used to hang out at and took her down the boardwalk and showed her, you know, all the nice restaurants and this and that. Yeah. And she's just absolutely enthralled with the place. So we've, uh, we've got big plans and ambitions of heading back down there as soon as the kids are done school. Well, I look forward to uh, spending more time with you. Um, so what that's like another four years for the oldest one. Yeah, we've we've got some time to put in. Got We're hoping to uh, hoping to pick up a couple of investment properties down there in the meantime, just so that yeah. when we do make the transition, it's a little easier. Perfect. Yeah, I know a good realtor. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope so. That's awesome, man. So I, you know, I want to go into this because you're so adaptive to change, and you know, it's it's they say it's not the survival of the, uh, of the fittest. The survival is dependent on one that's uh, most adaptive to change. Yep. So you went from a small brokerage, independent brokerage to EXP. Yeah. What had you find that in like, why, why are you crazy enough to, to jump when pretty much nobody in your area and, exactly. and, it, and it did. It felt crazy. Um, yeah. I was I was pretty much painted as the black sheep in town, right? Um, right. The other, there's only three other brokerages in town. They're all owned by like mom and pops. You know what I mean? Like they're they've been realtors the past thirty years, and their parents were realtors, and everybody in their office has been. I'm also the youngest in the game too. Um, mm. Well, there's there's been one other realtor who's joined in since who's younger than me, but I was also the youngest in the game. Um, and so when I introduced a cloud based brokerage to Williams Lake, it was a bit of a eye opener. It was a bit of a shock. Um, I had to really prove the concept, right? Because yeah. um, I was basically leaving what everybody's known for the past 30 years, you know, Remax, Royal LePage, smaller Christie. There, you know, there, there was a couple of brokerages that just has been in town for X amount of years. And that's, that's who you went to. And so introducing a new brokerage was one thing, but introducing a cloud-based brokerage was, was a new idea for everybody to begin with was, was had its challenges. Um, I found myself spending a lot more time marketing EXP than I was marketing myself. And I mean, it mm -hmm. kind of went hand in hand because yeah. if you look up EXP in Williams Lake, you're going to get to me no matter what, right? So yeah. um, I spent more time branding EXP than I did Trevor Big for the first few years. And uh, But I mean, EXP has so many tools and, and it made it so easy for me to do that, right? I mean, at, coming out of the gates, going from, you know, I was doing paper files where, you know, you, you write out the the dates and then all the details in this green form, you put it in a file, you put it on the managing broker's desk. And then after that, it could be either one of three spots. You could find it at the front desk reception. You could find it in the filing cabinet below. It might be the managing broker's office still, but this paper file could just be of any one of three places. And, and it took forever to fill all these paper files. And then going to sky slope and going to KV core and just like being enthralled with all these tools that they give you was like, it was like, felt like my real estate career has just been put on steroids, you know? Amazing. Wow. Were you agent number one in Wellens Lake? Uh, I've got one other agent who I go mano y mano with. She's been a realtor since the late 90s. Wow. Um, and, and she's built an incredible business. She's a solo agent as well. Um, she's actually, when I got my license, I approached her first and asked if we wanted, if she wanted to work together. Oh. Um, and, and she said, no. She said mm -hmm. she's more, she's more interested in keeping it in the family. She wants to have a, a small family brokerage and keep it that way. She's expecting her kids to get licensed and and just continue the 
the name like that. And so I went to the other brokerage and, mm -hmm. and that's where I got started, but she was the one who I approached first and she shut the door on me. So uh, I uh, decided to take things into my own hands. Amazing. Well, again, like you, you just, uh, you have no problems having these difficult conversations, approaching people. And this is why you're in the position that you're at, you know, selling 257 homes in five years. So what do you see for the future? I mean, again, it's going to be change. And there are a lot of changes going on in the United States. I would say for us, um, you know, the biggest thing right now, the topic is the AI. Yeah. How are you utilizing AI uh, for your business? And how do you see that changing our industry going forward? Yeah, I, I use it for almost everything, John. Wow. Um, like, like I, I use it. And then beyond that, I've trained my assistant how to use it, you know, effect efficiently and effectively to like, when AI came out, it was, it took a bit of learning, you know what I mean? Um, and I think everybody's going through that same learning curve, but I, I really attacked it head on. I think that that was a, a technology that I wanted to be at the forefront of. Um, and so at, at this point, I mean, I've got AI answering all my emails and doing all of my listing details and putting all my social media into calendars and breaking it down. I've got AI doing, you know, all of the additional work where, um, it, it you know, it, me and AI is like me and three assistants. Um, mm. it, it's it's insane, the time saver, right? And then, so now having my assistant dialed in on AI, it's like the two of us, and then we've got a social media manager as well. She's right into it. So I mean, between the three of us, we're able to to really put a huge footprint on on our online presence. And mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a big one with that is, is basically just being a time saver. Um, the amount of time that AI is able to save you in a day. And that's the kind of the key behind success in real estate is becoming a time ninja, right? How can you mm. maximize every single hour in that day, the most effectively and the most efficiently. And the power of AI is, is just, it's mind blowing. Chat GPT would be the number one tool I use. Right. Um, there's a handful of other tools, Zapier, um, Opus Clip, there's, there's a handful of other tools, but Chat GPT would be the one that I lean on the, the hardest. Yeah, me too. I mean, uh, I, I, I call it uncle chat GPT and, uh, he's my therapist every single day. I just talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ask him any yeah. questions. Oh, Crazy. absolutely, man. He, 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 you know, goes over all my, my strata documents and, wow. and, you know, it's, it's incredible. It's just, there's, it's almost when you really dive into it, it, it's almost limitless. The things that you can have this thing set up to do. So don't be scared of AI rather use it. And do you think we're going to be replaced at all uh, in the near future by AI? I think the agents say? who don't use AI will be replaced by agents who do use AI. Mm. Um, I think that's what you'll see. I think the agents that jump into AI now and are able to supercharge their business with this technology and in their back end, they're going to leave any other agent who hasn't yet adapted to AI, they're going to leave them in the dust. Um, there's going to hit a point where the average agent is not going to be able to compete with the level of service that an agent using AI will. Way faster. Yeah. Way faster, way more detail oriented, yeah. way more efficient, way more effective. Like there, there's things that this technology can do that, you know, I, I pride myself on my emails. I used to be a big email guy where mm -hmm. I could sit down for, you know, 45 to an hour and just write this real nice email that just <laughs> blows people's minds. You know what? I'm a huge email guy. I don't know. It's just a thing. Yeah. Um but but I don't even try anymore. Um, no. You know, I'll, I'll I'll put out the 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 rough outline of like what I had anticipated to say or you know the tone that I want it delivered in. Yeah. But I don't try to compete with what ChatGPT can put together. Um, I, I've I've gone mono e mono with ChatGPT on emails, and and it does it. You know what's what's the, what I take thirty minutes to do. It does it in three point five seconds, and and it's yeah. six times nicer, more put together, more thoughtful than I could have ever done myself. So, yeah, I I can't say enough about it. I love ChatGPT. All right. So agents who use AI will replace agents who do not use AI and just watch guys. All right. So I want to transition into this. Uh, you live heavy. You're a big guy, Trevor big, the namesake. <laughs> so how, how important do you think fitness and health relates to real estate? Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if I can say fitness and health relates to real estate directly. I think it relates to, um, success in, in any business. Success. Um, I think, yeah. I think personal success is, is number one. Um, I think if you wake up and you have a routine where, you know, the first two hours every day you spent on, on bettering yourself, you're, you're just going to end up being 10 times better in your business. Um, you're going to have more energy. You're going to be able to think clearer. You know what I mean? You have good diet, yeah. you get the proper water. If your body is running at a hundred percent, you're going to mm. be able to give a hundred percent. And I think that's oh where a lot of agents have a mix up where um, 
you know, lifting and personal fitness and all these things, it's not just for, for physique or to look good. You know what I mean? It's to make sure that I'm, my, my body is 100% optimized and that I'm able to actually empty the tank every day rather than, you know, feeling sluggish halfway through. Mm. I, uh, I, I have a lot of energy. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a lot of energy. Yes. And, and so, um, that, that stems from, you know, I I've created this level of energy, yeah. right? I wake up every morning and, and I put in the time and I put in the hours. I, my, my morning routine is, uh, I'm up at four 30, um, because between four 30 and five is when I'm able to eat one cup of cottage cheese. There's about 33 grams of protein in a cup of cottage cheese. Okay. Um, I don't love cottage cheese. I'll be honest with you. Nobody loves cottage cheese. I don't think anyways, but you want to get that fat in you. Is that why? Well, so I do the dry, dry curds actually. And so it's low, low fat, high protein. Okay. Um, I mix that with just a little bit of yogurt because hmm. otherwise yeah. it's, yeah, it's but, yeah. uh, but then that gives me at least 30 grams of protein before my workout. I work out between five and seven. That's the two hours of my day before anybody else wakes up. So the kids wake yeah. up at seven o'clock to, to get ready for the bus and everything. So between five and seven is Trevor's time. That's the time it's where I have, time, yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. Um, because then once the kids wake up at seven, between seven and eight, they're getting ready for school, packing lunches, doing all the things, getting their shoes on and out the door. And then eight to nine, I'm answering all emails and texts, um, nine to 10 prospecting. And then basically the rest of my day is a little bit of a, whatever I've scheduled, but I, I try really hard to stick to a pretty specific time block. Wow. Okay. Uh, we just, uh, we're witnessing a majorly uh, motivated individual who is got his shit together, obviously, and got his schedule on point, um, has three kids, only 29 years old, um, you're going to do very well. Your trajectory right now, you're going to be a massive success. You already are. What is your why behind all this? Nice. I like that question, John. Um, my why, I think, is a little bit my why isn't why I started. And I think that's where a lot of agents miss is, is when they get asked what their why is, they go into why they got started. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of the agents have the same generic answer. You know, they got started because of money, flexibility, financial freedom. They had a parent in real estate or they once saw a realtor driving a Porsche and thought that was pretty cool. So I decided to jump into it. <laughs> Nobody really cares about that. Why? Yeah. Um, the why that you need to figure out for yourself is why you're not going to quit when shit gets really hard and shit is yeah. going to get really hard. Yeah. Um, in, in the span, you know, you look at any big successful company and on average, the span of 10 years, they're going to have two really good years, two really bad years and six years of so-so. Mm -hmm. and, and that'll happen with, with basically any big successful business. And so there is going to be times when things get hard and you got to decide why you're not going to quit. Mm -hmm. And we, we touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, my why is simply just because I wasn't raised like that. Um, like, like I said, we, we grew up a little bit financially unfortunate um mm -hmm. and, I, and i mean when i say that i'm not talking like no trips to mexico kind of poor right i'm talking like christmas would come around and my mom would be wrapping up granola boxes and then cereal boxes taco shell boxes you know what I mean? old el paso um she'd wrap those up and inside there was black and white printouts of all the gifts that she wished that she could have got us this year just wasn't able to make it happen quite yet but uh, we were told to keep those as kind of coupons and throughout mm -hmm. the year she was going to make sure those gifts happened wow and so i at that age, I understood why we we're getting black and white printouts. So we'd been <clears throat> we'd been in this position before. So I, I got it, but I had to explain to my little sister how the hell Santa Claus's printer ran out of colored ink this year. And so that's that's like it's a pretty hard conversation, man. Um, dad left when I was two. He decided that his relationship with hard drugs was more important than his relationship with his kid. I flew out with him. I met him once when I was 16 um, and found out that his relationship with drugs still existed. And so that's the last time we ever spoke. And that was, I think, 14 years ago. Hey. Um, and, and like I said, we went to a lot of different schools. Um, once the lease was up, we were moving landlords didn't like us much. We had a hard time paying rent. And so basically my whole life, I've always kind of felt like the odds were stacked against me, right? Like I, yeah. I never had everything that I needed. And so I'm very comfortable there. You know what I mean? Whereas most people, when they're in that space and place, it's very uncomfortable. Yes. I'm very comfortable in opposition. Like I'm very comfortable in adversity. I'm very comfortable when in, I don't have all the resources, right? I'm very comfortable when I lose things because that was my life for oh. a long time. And and so I think, I think the reason things are so good now is because I refuse to quit when times were hard, right? And so you ask me, um, John, I know you love this. You ask me after years of eating shit, why didn't I quit? And, and it's because I think what I said before is the struggles that come along with success are a lot more bearable than the struggles that come along with poverty. And, and it's because I've seen both. And so it's not speculation. It's, it's facts. Well, 
I have no words, uh, Trevor. I'm, I'm deeply touched. And thank you so much for sharing vulnerably uh, your life and what it has been and, and the, the why behind Trevor Big. So thank you so much for sharing that. I think that, have you ever spoken on the big stage at EXPCon? I have not yet. I've, uh, you have last to. EXP con, I'm not going to lie to you. I wrote a speech just because I'm a bit of a go-getter and thought, you know what, if I find a way to make myself up on stage here, yeah. I want to make sure I have something to say. So I wrote a speech for the last EXP con with no intentions of ever saying it, but I, uh, I do have goals of getting up on that big stage here. Let's get you on that stage. We need to hear your story on the bigger platform. This is going to be posted on YouTube, obviously, and people are going to hear about your story. Um, yeah. Everybody will be inspired by what you just said. Uh, Trevor, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, last I but appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Thank you. And as we go along, I mean, it's been a tough couple of years, uh, as I would say. I don't know about everybody else and uh, in the world, but for 2025 and beyond, what is your best advice for real estate agents going forward? Best advice for real estate agents going forward, I think... Uh... I think the three things that I would focus all of my energy on over the next three years or even two years next year, um, one would be to implement and get used to having that extremely high level of communication. Mm. Um, I think if you've noticed what happened down in the States with the whole NAR settlement and the way that buyer's agents are now being compensated, uh, I, I think we can expect some sort of ripple effect to come up this way. And so I think now more than ever, it's so important to solidify relationships um, because you're going to kind of lose those and a, a, a customer is only going to pick you if they trust you at, at yep. that point, right? You know, you're going to lose a lot of those customers that just pick up the phone and say, Hey, I seen your ad on the bus stop. I, I want to go with you. That's, that's going to kind of start to fade out. And I think that it's going to be a, a much more relationship type of, of transaction. So mm. extremely high level communication, get used to it. Authenticity, be your authentic self. Um, the saying real recognizes real couldn't be said any better. It, it's very true. Um, you can probably, you know, capture a few leads putting on this persona or however you want to portray yourself. But uh, at the end of the day, authenticity is what's going to retain clients. Um, and then number three would be systems. You've got to have systems mm -hmm. in place. I used to think that it was impossible to be a top performing agent and a top performing dad and a top performing husband. Mm -hmm. and, and I just thought there was no way, um, you know, work-life balance. How is it possible? Systems. Systems is how it becomes possible. Um, you've got to have systems in place. And, and you know, once you've got the right systems in place, you, you would be amazed on what you can accomplish in the same you know, 24 hours that everybody else has. I love that, guys. Uh, if you're watching this right now, um, get your systems in order yep. and make sure that you communicate with your buyers and sellers now because in the age of AI, business will happen at the speed of trust because they only do business with people they know, like, and trust, guys. Uh, what a great conversation today. And there will be a part two, I guarantee it. Uh, come yeah. back for more, Trevor Big. Thank you, Trevor, for today. And we'll see you at the next event where I hope you will be on the big stage. Thank you. I'll see you there, buddy. Thank you. All right.